All right, oh boy, I love this song. Infallible for Mr. Kevin Kelly, supporter of the cause. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the turtle food money. And also for RGG14, and also, also for Master Ben Hodo, who says he's going to be the first person to watch this video, so let's see if that comes true. Okay, the implied chord progression. Nobody is playing the chord progression in this fashion in this video, but I want you to keep this in mind. Oh, by the way, detune your guitar. All the strings go down one half step, so instead of regular Eddie A Dynamite Goodbye Eddie, we have E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, E flat. I'll try to remember to put the link to that video in the description, but otherwise I'm sure there's 800 people who have taught you how to do that, including me, so maybe you'll happen upon my video. Okay, here we go. The progression, which nobody plays in this way, but is the chord progression for the music, right, is do a power chord on the ninth fret of the A string. I want you to keep this in mind for tomorrow's video. If I said that twice, that's because I really mean it. So, we'll call this F sharp, even though it's really F because we've detuned, but it's usually F sharp. So, ninth fret, A string, power chord. Down two frets to E. Down two frets to D. And down one fret to C sharp. But the way that it's being played in the song is start how we did, but just a two string power chord. So, A string ninth fret and D string eleventh fret. Now, thank goodness it's way up here, because look what you have to do next. Now, the D string is going to go from 11 to 14, so your pinky finger is going to need to get involved, and the A string is going to stay the same. I watched live versions and no one was doing this. In fact, they were playing it in standard tuning and a half step down, so that's another thing entirely. But on the record, this is clearly happening. Our F sharp power chord. What the heck is this? We've got our F sharp note and this is an E note. Remember that the progression was F sharp E. So F sharp isn't normally in the E chord, but E of course is. And F sharp is the two, so this is like an F sharp, I mean an E with like a two in the bass. It's wacky and that's why it sounds cool. The next one, the pinky finger goes down to 12 while the progression goes to D, right? So now we're left with a D and an F sharp. And those are two notes in your D chord. Here's a D, right? And there's an F sharp. So this is a rather Jeremy-esque way to play a D chord. And then the last one is back to your original F sharp thing. So, which really actually isn't an F sharp at all, I realized as I just almost said that. Remember the progression went to C sharp, and in C sharp we have C sharp, G, G sharp, and where's this F sharp coming from? I need help. It's right there. <laughs> it's the... Yeah, it's the major third of C sharp. So we've got a, uh, it's limit. Yes, I can. It's because this song is all focused around that F sharp, right? It's F sharp centric. So we have this F sharp note droning out the whole time and C sharp major is the oddball. If you think of the relative major key A, it's A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E, F sharp, which just sounded like infallible a lot in there, right? It's because we're in the key of A major or F sharp minor, but given it starts on F sharp minor, this F sharp note is always okay to hear. In fact, great to hear, even over the oddball chords. In a different context, it might not work, but because it is spends so much time on the F sharp that that it just slips right by it and even sounds great. Glad we figured that out. <laughs> and then of course, the ultra cool fill. One of the reasons why Pearl Jam's the coolest band in the universe is D11, D9, A12, A11. Like that pinky reach action? Well, play this way. That's cool too. It's also the cat came back. Old Mr. Johnson had trouble of his own. He had a yellow cat who wouldn't leave his home. I digress. Uh, there's a, a, a high part going on on the record, and Stone, in the version I was watching live, which was Boston 13, did not do this, but on the record it's going something like this. Do the baby strings on the 14th fret. 
and then baby E becomes 16, and then it becomes 14, 12, and then we're gonna do B 15, baby E 14, and then down to, let's do 10, 10, and then either 9, 9, which is what I prefer because it goes along with that C sharp major better, but I think what it becomes is 10, 9, like that, which kind of goes right along with that that's going on right when the track starts, so it'll be like this. And then you could go. Nine, seven, ten, nine. To get that high octave, if you want. But that's not what Stone was doing live in Boston 2013. He was doing this. Now, his guitar was tuned in standard tuning, and they were playing it at a half step down from usual. Um, so you can't do this in this tuning. But if you put your guitar in standard tuning and play, I feel like this is going to need a second episode. But what Stone was doing was, okay, take this much of your D shape, just the pointer and the ring fingers, and move it up two frets. <laughs> and then move it down two frets to where D would be. And then we want open G, B1. And then open G, open B. It sounds so out of context in, in the wrong tuning, so just forget that that even happened. Yeah, but that's the verse, and the only other thing about the verse is... fill. There it is. Uh, A string, fourth fret, up to seven, eight, nine. So back into your riff, so you'd want to go. Super cool. All right, verse check. Oh, silly me. There's a C sharp on the ninth fret of the E string, too. So instead of, you can just go. Might be a little more convenient. The inter thingy. You think we've been here before. You are mistaken. It's a D power chord. Fifth fret of the A string. Down to B, second fret of the A string. Chord progression for the chorus is A, so you can play A if you want, but I'm gonna play because I want that whole big root six major bar chord everythingness there. Down to G, you can play regular G if you want, but then it's F sharp minor, no way around that. Two, four, four, and then E, and that's it. That's for the chorus, but. There's a guitar doing another thing that did not occur in the live version I was watching. Everyone just chimed in with these bar chords. Um, but on the record, there's the octave chord starting at A, the 12th fret of the A string, and A again, the 14th fret of the G string going 12, 10, 9, 7. and you don't want to hear any other strings. So you mute all the other strings with whatever available fingers you have. It's mostly my pointer finger nudging up and laying gently but not pushing on the rest of the strings. Yeah, and then at the end of the chorus, it does the inter thingy again. It's quite an accomplishment. I wish you luck in that endeavor. Next part. The next thing that's different is the inter thingy going into the solo after the chorus. So D, B, but now D, E on the seventh fret, F on the eighth fret, and into the solo progression. Now, if you want, just for fun, you can play your uh, E and the chord that kind of 
more better comes in between E and F sharp is F diminished, and that would be 8, 9, 10. That's not what they do, but I like doing that, so you can try it if you want, so it would be all... And then we're into the... Yeah, I just like that, but the regular way. Solo progression is going to be F sharp minor way up here, so do your power chord on A9 and add your middle finger on B10. Down to, that might be a lot of trouble, but the next chord is the exact same shape on the 4th fret, C sharp minor. So, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, F sharp minor, C sharp minor, C sharp minor, D, that's major. So five seven 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 with your ring finger there, and then you do that much again. This is a solo worth doing too, because it's yeah. Going to next. F sharp minor, C sharp minor, C sharp minor, D, C sharp minor, D, E, and then into our chorus. So yeah, second time. And let's do the solo. We are dealing with the C sharp minor scale. The C sharp minor pentatonic scale is probably what you're uh, familiar with. You know, 9, 12. It sounds like this song already. 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 12, 9, 12, but we're going to add the notes on the E string, 10, and 10 on the B string to accomplish G, 11, B, 9, 10, 10, 12, E, 9, 9, 10, 9, so... And then, start where we started, G11, B9, 10, 9, 12, 9, G11. Whole thing there. It's funny when it's the same thing twice and you never realize it until you go to figure it out. Yeah, okay, so then you do the same exact thing. G9, 11, B9, 9, 10, into the last chorus, and I, I think that's everything that there is to say about this. Let me double check. Yeah, that's it. Infallible. Check. Madam Secretary Prime. How many more do we have to go on Lightning Bolt? Awesome. Lovely to do a stone and Jeff Peace here. Thank you so much for that request and your kind support, Mr. Kelly, and everybody else. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.